Welcome back to the bluegrass. It's a beautiful August day. It's very hot, so kind of bear with me. These little dogs, their fatigue meters are already out, but we have to make this video in the middle of the day because that is the time that we have. This little dog's going home tomorrow. Now, the subject of today's video um, is, is my child ready for a puppy? Okay, so like uh, my daughter has been wanting a Jack Russell puppy for a long time and uh, so I, of course, you know, I said I'd get her one and a picture just got sent to us yesterday of this little puppy and it's really cute. But um, I thought that a really good little video would be to explain to you how to make sure that your children are ready for a puppy. So I told Charlotte, I said, listen, if you want a Jack Russell puppy, you have to show me that you're responsible enough uh, to help raise it and take care of it because I already have a bunch of dogs. I got labs and Malinois and farm dogs and stuff. I don't need another dog, right? Uh, so Charlotte's going to have to show me at uh, her age that she can be responsible, okay? And she said, sure, Daddy, I'll do that. And luckily, I had a Jack Russell come in here for training. And so this dog has primarily been trained, of course, with my oversight, but by my young daughter. So Charlotte, come over here. Charlotte is going to walk this little dog while I walk a couple of other dogs. Lola, come on. Uh, and we're going to talk about how I decided that Charlotte was ready uh, to have kind of her own dog. Now, of course, little children don't actually have their own dogs, but what we, what we can talk about is making sure that if, a, if a, a child wants a dog, okay, Charlotte, just follow me. If a child wants a dog, then they need to realize that uh, there needs to be an equitable distribution of labor as regards to taking care of the dog. Because what kind of ends up happening with dogs is that only moms have dogs. Isn't that right, cameraman? Yeah. I mean, we see a lot of dogs out here, okay? Uh, but most of the time, it's the mom taking care of the dogs. And sometimes the husband picked the dog out. Sometimes the dog's bought for the children. But ultimately, the moms end up uh, doing all the work. So for you moms out there that are trying to decide whether or not it's time to get your child a dog, I'm going to give you a few tips, okay? So now right here, what you see is that I have Charlotte demonstrating that she is capable of influencing a young Jack Russell puppy. Okay, that's the first thing, you know. Does my daughter have the work ethic required to, uh, you know, manifest the requisite skills to influence a dog? Because that, that's really what it's about, right? Can the, dog, can the children influence the dogs, and then are they willing to influence, influence them in such a way as it mitigates the need for the mom to carve out extra time in her day? Okay, because moms nowadays, they just don't have any time, you know, they're going to school, they're going to baseball and soccer and football and dance and the grocery store, plus most of them work. So like moms really over the years have put a lot on their plate and dog trainers make a lot of money off busy moms, you know. Unfortunately, you can be the best dog trainer in the world. You can't make time, right? I mean, I'm a pretty good dog trainer. My son, George, is a pretty good dog trainer. My daughter, Charlotte, is getting to be a pretty good dog trainer. And we can make things easier, but we cannot make time for a mom. We just can't do it, okay? So if you're gonna, you know, if, if your child is trying to talk you into getting a dog, make sure that that child uh, has the inclination to help and then has the time to help, you know? I mean, you have to set reasonable goals for your dogs and you have to set reasonable goals for your children. Okay, so now, when I first started making this, uh, you know, kind of making this, uh, you know, set of requirements that Charlotte had to meet to get a dog, I, you know, that's the first thing I told her. I said, look, you take care of a lot of dogs, you help at the kennel a lot, but like she's not personally responsible for the dogs that come here. I said, you have to show me that you can be personally responsible for dogs. So I took a crate and uh, I moved it up to the house and I put Charlotte in charge of walking the dog, of feeding the dog, of treat work with the dog, of teaching our basic skills and uh, vocabulary, you know. So Charlotte has been intimately involved with raising this Jack Russell the whole time and I think you can see she followed along well. And and that's one thing, guys, getting your kids to where they'll um, like help with training sessions because it's new and it's easy to do with the training puppy. But let's expand on it a little bit. Is your child mature enough to help all day long? So I just kind of want to show you guys what we were doing in terms of the formal training. You know, we did a little vocabulary. We did a little physical skills. But for the rest of the day, we have to do some just regular lifestyle stuff. I have to work on Charlotte's play uh, house because she has a friend coming over. It's been in Germany for a couple of years. And uh, we've got to go out and get some ice cream because I told her we'd go get some ice cream before. And listen, if you have a dog, you can't just lock it in a little plastic prison in the house and forget about it when it's time to go out and work on the playhouse or when it's time to go get ice cream. You have to integrate the dog into your lifestyle. And if you, as the mom or maybe the dad, doesn't have a lot of time, then the child has to be willing to step up 
and take some time away from their preferred activities and make owning a puppy the top of their uh, you know, priorities list. Okay? So uh, that's kind of what we were doing, uh, just to set the stage for the day. Charlotte has helped me train this dog to come, to be still, to have good manners, to start social situations off by being calm, attentive, and polite, and to refrain from doing things that are dangerous, destructive, or rude. Okay? Now we've done that at the, in, in our formal kennel setting, and uh, we're just going to go do our regular lifestyle stuff, and we're going to see if she can stay focused on doing the, uh, you know, the heavy lifting of taking care of a dog. And if your child, you know, can do that, then that's awesome. Now, as a caveat, let me talk to you about this. Hey, George, bring me, let's let these dogs go, Charlotte. It's hot. These guys probably want to go, oh, play in the, oh, go on, go on. Oh, go, <laughs> go play in the water or the shade. No, Georgie, go get me that little doll over there. Okay, so basically, you might say, well, Stoney, that's cool that you got your daughter to, uh, you know, help train the dog, but I don't live in a situation where it's easy for me to do that. I don't have any other dogs, you know, so what do I do? Well, here's what you do. You get you, come on, Georgie. You get a doll, okay? And I've, I've said this in previous videos, but I'm going to reiterate it here. You take this right here, this little doll like this, and, um, you know, you say, okay, you're going to you tell your children that they're going to have to demonstrate to you that they can take care of a doll, right? And uh, so you put this doll on a schedule. So if your children leave for school at 7, okay, the dog's got to be walked early in the morning. So you set your alarm for 545, right? And then you make them carry the doll down to the Johnson's house and back right? And uh, then you know, when you get home from school and they want to come in and they want to get a snack or they want to play their video games or they want to get started on their homework, nope. Dog has to go down to the Johnsons and back. And then they're going to go to soccer practice, guess where the dog has to go? Dog has to go down to the Johnsons and back. And then before bed, you know, you got to ask them, you say, did you brush your teeth? You know, do you have your pajamas on? And they'll be like, yes, yes. And go, did you walk the dog? Right? So take the pajamas off, put their track shoes back on, the dog goes back to the Johnsons, okay? And then, if you want to be real serious about it, this is why I've seen parents do crazy stuff, but it really works. You take a poop bag, right? One of those little blue bags, and you leave it at the Johnsons' house on the way home from school. So they have to walk the dog down to the Johnsons. That way you know they picked up the poop bag and they brought it back. You know, if you're a good parent, maybe when they're eight or nine or seven, you'll go out and walk with them. I like to let them sink or swim myself. <laughs> so look, down to the Johnsons and back. And then everywhere, you know, just put the puppy on a regular schedule. And I'll tell you something if you go, well, Stoney, listen, I don't know that I believe that about uh, walking the dog down to the Johnsons and putting the dog in the crate and waking up early. Uh, you know, I can see where it's kind of valuable, but it's not the same as, as a real dog. Okay, here's how, you, here's how you fix that. I guarantee you somewhere in your network of friends or somewhere in your neighborhood, there is a dog that is not getting enough exercise. Okay, and a lot of times that dog belongs to an elderly person and elderly people, you know, this, they sometimes, have, especially in the summertime or the wintertime when the weather's inclement, they have a hard time exercising their dogs. Well, you take your children over to, you know, Mrs. McCoy's house and you say, hey, listen, uh, my daughter, my son is thinking about getting a dog. Would you mind if we helped you out with your dog for a couple of weeks just so that my child can understand what it's like to walk a dog and uh, you know, regulate its energy properly and manage it so it's safe and doesn't get into the traffic and uh, clean up after it, okay? And listen, I'm almost 100% certain, I've never seen anybody that tried that strategy that couldn't find a dog for their children to walk and exercise, and it's a 360 degree win. You get to understand whether or not your child is mature enough to have a dog. Your children get to understand, you know, like, the difference between watching dogs on TV and actually being responsible for the care and maintenance of a dog, and someone in your neighborhood's dog gets a lot of extra attention, and the dog's owner, uh, you know, gets a little help managing a situation that maybe is a little bit hard to manage right now, okay? So that's a perfect little strategy for you. Use that, and I guarantee you, you're going to be able to make a good decision as it relates to whether or not your daughter needs a dog or your son needs a dog okay now we're just going to go out and we'll get a little footage as we live our day and charlotte's going to be tasked with uh, keeping the dog safe and uh, we hope everything works out so we got done working all the dogs at the kennel and then uh, well you guys <laughs> have daughters y'all know what it's like you're always talking about horses or unicorns or working on a playhouse or something and you know that's what my sunday afternoon is going to consist of for at least the next few hours uh, so i have this little dog and uh, so you know like let's think in terms of if it was a house dog and you were busy 
right, and you want to build a playhouse, what do you need to know? You need to know that you can trust your child to keep up with the dog, right? So this dog, she hasn't had a chance to potty, and she's, uh, you know, she's wanting to play and get into stuff, and I don't have time to manage her because I've got to put a window in a playhouse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this responsibility over to C, and, uh, you know, look, tell her, look, if you want to have a dog, you have to show me that you're up to the task. So Charlotte, you're going to be in charge of playing with this dog and keeping her out of the road. Cameraman, you can kind of watch them, and I will put the window in the playhouse. Just go over there, run around, play with her, Charlotte. Now it's going to get a little bit noisy for a minute, guys, but this is just me um, using a jigsaw. And voila, I got my window done, and now I can come over and just check and make sure everything's going well. I might join in the fun for a second. Charlotte, come catch me. Ah! So I'll play tag with Charlotte. Oh, now I'm going to tag Charlotte. Ah! Tag. Oh, you see? And by us being interesting, uh, well, then the dog wants to play with us, okay? Instead of running off towards the road or running over to the neighbor's house or something. I've checked in. Charlotte's doing a great job. So now I can go back and put the window in the playhouse and then you know in just a little while we'll be able to load up in the car and we're going to ride up and get some ice cream and charlotte's doing such a good job we'll be able to take the dog with us okay i'm looking guys let me explain this to you what you want every decision in life you need it to be a 360 degree win okay like everybody involved needs it needs it to be a win so if you're getting a dog you want to make sure the dog ends up happy the child ends up happy mom and dad end up happy the neighbors end up happy and uh you know really basically everybody the dog comes in contact with should uh you know be a little bit better off as a result of that contact so just keep that in mind make sure that you're not bringing something into the house where somebody's going to end up unhappy okay so these little tests that i'm doing Okay, that pretty much guarantees me that I'm going to be happy with this new Jack Russell puppy that we're getting. All right, Charlotte, let me finish this up and we'll go get some ice cream. And just like that, we're finished with the playhouse and we're off to get some ice cream. And this is going to give us a chance for Charlotte's last test of the day, which is to keep <laughs> the dog from jumping out of the car. Because what happens, Charlotte, if you let the dog jump out of the car? It'll die. It'll die, right? <laughs> Okay, so we're loading up uh, in our convertible and we're going to drive around and if Charlotte can manage to pass this last test of the day, I'm going to have 100% confidence that she's going to be an awesome Jack Russell owner. Alright, and we are off to get some ice cream. Georgie, what kind of ice cream are you getting? I don't know, cookies and cream probably. Cookies and cream. Charlotte, what kind of ice cream are you getting? What kind of ice cream are you getting? Chocolate. Chocolate. What are you getting, Mom? Probably chocolate. Chocolate. We got some ice cream, and uh, Charlotte has kept that dog alive back there. Has she even made any attempts to get out, Charlotte? Nope. Dang. Well, I tell you what, uh, any little girl that is mature enough to keep a uh, Jack Russell Terrier from jumping out of a convertible is most certainly mature enough to have her own Jack Russell. So, well, you're very welcome, and uh, I'm so proud of you for helping me make this video, and I hope this helps a lot of families decide whether or not they're ready to get a puppy.